Hey guys, hopefully you can see me over here in the tiny little corner. Um, I just want to quickly go over your survey lab. I just want to make sure that you guys know what's going on, especially in case you missed class on Wednesday. So you should be able to see the lab projected on the screen in this video. Uh, you'll also see me in the corner. Uh, first thing I just want to tell you guys is just some clarifications on the areas in which you can take your pictures. So I think most of you probably will start in your backyards just because you have school and other classes. When you are out surveying in your backyard, please restrict yourself to your lawn area. Don't go into your vegetable gardens. Um, if your lawn is like restorative prairie or if you have wildflower areas within your lawn, feel free to use those as survey areas. But if you have just a traditional grass lawn, try to stick within the parameters of that area. When you're taking your pictures, you want to try to get your picture so that you actually can go in close and see the species. If you do a lot of wide out shots, you're gonna have to go in and zoom in afterwards and it won't have the detail. So when you're taking like your producer pictures or you're taking your consumer pictures, try to get those in closer. When you are doing your area of low biodiversity, you may not have as many producers i'm not expecting you to always have three and three when you go to the area of bio higher biodiversity i expect lots more so if you only have grass in your backyard and you can't find any other plants that's a sign of very good lawn maintenance but it is a sign of very low biodiversity so make sure that you try to do a good survey and look but I'm gonna go over the requirements. I also produced a checklist for you guys to use. Okay guys, so for your lab, you have a long list of instructions right here. First thing I wanna highlight, first thing I wanna highlight is that the assignment is due on October 2nd. So I'm giving you guys a full week and this weekend to go out and get your data. So please make sure that you are proactive and you are setting up that trip to go out to a forest preserve, a local park with a nice little garden, um, Eloa, you know, any place that really does have a high level of biodiversity, you could look that up in your area. Um, you could even look into maybe going into one of the public areas of one of the ravines. First thing you need to do is label your two locations. I would like you to be specific. So if you do go to along the Skokie River, state what the name of the park is. I'm gonna give you guys an example. In the student sample I created, I went out to a local forest preserve that I live close to, Warren Woods, that was the name. So I'd like you guys to have a specific example or a specific name. Um, location two, I just marked as my backyard. Uh, you can be pretty generic with, <laughs> you can be generic with your backyard label. All right, you guys are gonna take a series of photos. I have this laid out on the checklist, but there's also all of them listed at the top of your lab. You're gonna take a landscape photo. You are going to take, a landscape photo is a wide shot of the area. So you kind of look up at the horizon and then you take a wide area wide area shot. You can also, if you want to, you could do like a panoramic view and make a video. You can insert videos into Google Docs. After you get that landscape shot, I want you to find an area of exposed soil. In your own backyard, it is possible that you could just go to the edge of a garden or you could just take a little corner and take a shovel and just expose the soil and take a picture of it. When you're walking in a forest preserve, it's a little trickier. I had to carefully look along the edges and eventually I did find a little bare spot of soil. There's a couple questions about nutrient cycles, pH, and you need to be able to see the color of the soil to do some of the analysis for the nutrients. So make sure you do get a little picture of the soil. You need to take three shots of producers. When you go into the shots of your producers, again, that's when you wanna have that zoom effect where you can actually see the singular species. I'll show you guys my shots really quick or at least one of them. So right here, my first fo producer photo was of Aster. And you guys can see it's that purple flower. That's the kind of shot I'm looking for. I also have, <clears throat> excuse me, Indian grass and goldenrod. So I'm really trying to single out that shot of that specific producer. And then your next series of shots will be three consumers. So again, I was walking around the forest preserve 
These are not the easiest shots always to capture. So if you're not able to get pictures of producers, you can also make a video of like the sound you hear. So I heard frogs and crickets and birds all around me. If you want to make one of those your consumer photos, you could just make a video of that sound. Uh, you can see in my first one, I was looking on those flowers that I took pictures of and I found bees. Um, I was lucky and was able to actually get a picture of a butterfly on a plant. And then my third consumer shot is kind of sad. It's hard to see, but I had two hawks that flew down. I really highly recommend do, looking up, doing aerial shots are a good way to get that third or even two of your consumers if you're looking up. Um, there was bunches of like squirrels and other animals that I tried taking pictures of and they were just too fast for me. You know, old woman trying to chase down a squirrel didn't work for me. But you guys can take a photo of an animal and if you see it flying, just kind of put a label or mark what it is that you saw. I'm like, I'll give you guys the credit for it. Having done this, I can tell you it is a little difficult. All right, and then the last Three shot or the last two shots you're asked for are the decomposers and biodiversity. I'm gonna scroll down and show you guys what mine look like, just so you have reference. So this is my decomposer. Uh, decomposers are probably definitely one of the hardest aspects of this survey to find. Um, I highly suggest if you're out in the woods going and looking for a dead log or some organic material that looks like it's dying off. Um, I found moss and ants and different types of fungi around this. Uh, remember, look for mushrooms, look for moss, look for lichen. That kind of stuff is easy to recognize. Um, in this case, I had a rotting log and there was moss on it. So I took a picture of that. And then I also have a photo here. This is the ecological relationship. I like you guys to take a picture of a mutualistic relationship, predation, you can do competition, you can do herbivory. So any of those relationships that you find in 4.3, you guys can show here. As you guys can see, I have competition, so plants competing for sunlight. And then the last photo is a biodiversity. It would be good for you guys to take a photo for biodiversity. You're gonna be asked to count the number of species within a cubic meter. I understand that some people probably don't have measurements uh, and don't exactly know the size of a cubic meter. Uh, just for reference, it's just a slightly longer than a yardstick. So if you guys just kind of think about a square that's about a yardstick by a yardstick, that's the area I'm looking for for you to count the species, take a photo of that area. I would also like you guys to do a video of that area. The video is not for this lab, it's for the biodiversity lab that you guys are gonna be having come, that you guys will have coming up in a little bit. But in case we uh, have a bad frost between now and then, you'll have the data that you need. So make sure that you get these biodiversity folders, or biodiversity photos, videos, and your counts because this is not going to be just for this lab, it will be for our next survey lab. All right, so that's all the photos and videos you guys will have to do. There's a couple of questions built into here asking you to describe decomposers, your ecological relationship. Um, you're also asked to make a list of the plants and animals that you see. So here you can see I made a list of all the animals that I saw out in the forest preserve or the types of plants. I wasn't specific. I just kept it really general. I saw trees, I saw shrubs, I saw flowering plants. You don't have to list specific species. I just want to know the type of plants. And then you can compare your list to your other location and see, again, just a general idea of what the biodiversity difference is. Okay, same thing with consumers. You guys can see I have a list of different consumers on mine. Um, I just listed all of the different animals, insects that I was seeing as I was walking through the forest preserve or hearing. So again, keep your ears open. It's like an observation here. You're not gonna see every animal, but you will hear more. Okay, once you guys have this top portion or all the data for this top portion done, then you can move to an indoor location to start collecting other data. You need to get your photos and your species count and your list of producers and consumers that you see in the location that you're at. 
Then the other key thing that you need to do on the day that you actually conduct your survey is the weather conditions. So you just pull up an app. So like I have a weather app on my phone. I just pull that up and I record this information. You really need to get this the day of because it's difficult to backtrack and find weather data. So if you just pull your app up and type out these things or write out these things, it'll save you a lot of grief, trust me. So your temperature, your humidity, your precipitation, wind speed, and your weather conditions. Just a general description of what the weather is like that day. Thank you, buddy. Your pH, I've given you guys various pHs from different types of soils that we see within our area. If your type of soil isn't on that list, I'd like you to check in with me. Uh, salinity and fire are questions that you guys will have to think out and answer. Then on your checklist, you're going to see a list of all of these resources. You might just want to make some notes about what they look like or get examples of them for your survey, just so when you have to there, sit down. There, there, there something. Oh, my mommy. <laughs> Sorry guys, recording a video with a two-year-old. So there might be a few disruptions here. Okay, so again, on your checklist, you have all of these resources listed. So you have water, you might wanna make a note of what the water, weather conditions or the water conditions look like. Um, nutrients, the main thing you need to know is if the area is fertilized or if there's any human maintenance done to it. So your lawn is more likely to have that. Ask your parents if you have no idea. The color of the soil will also play a role into this. Look at my carbon example here. Uh, you want to note if it's full sun, partly shaded, all shade, part sun. Oxygen, I think, is pretty obvious. Food sources that are available in the area for consumers. Uh, walk around, see if you can find holes that animals have burrowed, see if you can find nests, if there's any evidence of animals having basically homes. So those are the things that you're gonna to need to look for. The last thing is gonna be limiting factors. So anything that limits the population size or the growth of an organism. So I've got a couple of examples here in case you need references, but I'm looking for three that you physically observe and three inferred. So inferred will be things that you just kind of assume based off of what you see with the conditions. And I have some explanations down here below. All right, I'm gonna stop for a second and click over to the checklist so you guys can see what you can take in the field with you. Okay guys, this is the survey checklist. It basically just lays out each of the things that you need. This is also gonna tell you your basic rubric, so the point values. Everything that you need to get from your locations is listed right here. So if you wanna take this sheet out, like print it out and bring it with you or have it on your phone and kind of fill out the written stuff as you're working and then take your photos, this is a great reference to have and then you can just transfer it over when you can actually sit down and open up your lab at a computer. I think I forgot to list or mention when I was going over the lab that you guys also have to have a list of abiotic factors. So those are your non-living components. Um, I'm looking for four. So total point value for that will be up to four. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please shoot me emails. Otherwise, thank you for enduring this long video and explanation. Have a good day.